Good evening, everybody. Thanks for waiting for a couple of uh, minutes. Uh, but it would be a, a pre uh, interesting presentation on testing, but not just a testing, but the visual testing using PyCharm and PyTest. So I'm presenting the speaker, the Brian Okem. Uh, he's the author of Python Testing with PyTest and the co-host of Python Bytes podcast. So along with him would be joining Paul Everett, uh, he is a PyCharm and a WebStorm developer advocate at JetBrains. So, welcome, Mr. Brian. Yeah. Hi. I actually cannot believe how excited I am to be here. Um, last, uh, I'm already going off script. Um, uh, last year was my first PyCon, and I'm like, man, I want to do that. And uh, so here I am this year. This is awesome. So thanks, for, thanks a lot for coming. So today, uh, talking about visual testing, I am kind of a, that's me. Um, I host a couple podcasts. I host uh, Testing Code by myself, and then I co-host Python Bytes with uh, Michael Kennedy. Um, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, by day, I am a not-so-mild-mannered uh, team lead at Roden Schwartz. And, um, and also, um, if you haven't noticed, I wrote a book. It's got a rocket on the cover. Yeah. Um, it's been, it was fun. So uh, Paul, we, we were doing this together, Paul Everett and I. Paul is the PyCharm and WebStorm developer advocate at JetBrains. And I don't remember how many months ago, maybe six months ago, Paul helped me learn PyCharm. And uh, every time, because I was trying to get my team on board and uh, I had issues of how to use it, Paul helped me through those, and then in the last few weeks, he was interest, instrumental in putting this talk together. Even though it's up, me up here, we both have a big part of this talk, so thanks, Paul. So visual testing with PyCharm um, and PyTest. Um, there's so much that we have to cover, um, and I, I wanted to have this be uh, friendly for New, new people and people experienced with testing. So we're gonna go through a lot of stuff. Um, I'm really passionate about testing, but I'm not passionate about testing because I like writing test code more than I like writing the code under test. It's because I think a thoughtful use of testing practices and frameworks and tools can uh, free us up, free time up to uh, do more interesting work. Um, so I've got, a lot, quite a lot going on. So uh, so why not start with a story? We have so much time. No. Um, okay, I, I do, this does relate, but I wanna take take you back to, it's 1980-something. Uh, I've got a TRS-80 computer from Radio Shack that I got because an Apple IIe was way too expensive. Um, back in the day, there were magazines uh, that were dedicated to this computer and uh, uh, you could get, um, you could get. There were program listings in them, and I, I, I would get these and occasionally type them in. I had a biorhythms thing I programmed in. I didn't even know what biorhythms were. I still don't quite know what they are, but uh, Lunar Lander was my favorite. It took forever to type in, so I played it a lot. And then when I got pretty good at it, I was like. I can't get any better, maybe if I change the program. So I didn't know programming yet, but I, I, I knew what I typed in. So I tried to muck with the, uh, the gravity settings to, to make gravity different, or make the uh, thrust work better so the acceleration was faster. Um, and most of them like, did not help the game. It made the game almost unplayable. But mucking with the code, fiddling with things, just playing with it with uh, no fear for like breaking something or anything. It was, it was fun. And I'm always trying to make sure I don't, to get fun back into programming. And I think that automated tests, especially with uh, PyCharm and PyTest and using them efficiently, can free up time so that we can have more time to play, to play with our code. Okay, TDD crash course. I don't want to assume that everybody here knows test-driven development. Actually, I, I kind of hope you already don't because my version of it's different than most people give. Um, so um, 
mo I'm going to do it in like five slides really fast um, to bore, I don't want to bore the people that already know it, but I also, uh, it, it has relevance to how I do, I write software. Um, if you want to learn more, my favorite uh, resource for test-driven development is Kent Beck, and I took a really long interview with him that was done maybe 10 years ago, and I cut it down and uh, have snippets of his conversation with uh, my commentary, and there's a link to that at the end of the slide deck. So I, if you want to learn more about test-driven development, I encourage that. So back in history, we used to do testing last. It doesn't work. Testing at the end does not work. Um, because test failures, we learn from failures. Test failures teach us about our software. They teach us about our design. We need those lessons as early as possible. So let's move it earlier. Let's uh, uh, move it to the beginning. Uh, we, we learn about our software and our design from our tests. And I, I like to think of it like um, in, in, in school, like in high school. Actually, in, I was doing pretty good through school until high school. And then suddenly I had way too much reading to do that I couldn't get done. And so I came up with, I thought a hack, but I think it works great. In uh, a lot of textbooks they'll have at the end of the section or at the end of the chapter, there'll be a, uh, some questions uh, to, to test your learning. I just always skipped to the end and, and like read the questions first, and then I could read the chapter faster. I could read it really fast, and then when I came up to a part of the, uh, a part of the story or a part of whatever I was learning that pertained to one of those questions, I could slow down and read more carefully. And that's the same thing I want to do with tests. I want to ask questions about the software, and I want to I want to get those questions as early as I can, so that I can code fast. And then when I get to a part of the software that I don't quite understand, I can slow down, and work on it, spend more time. This is the traditional way test-driven development is is uh, marked: uh, red, green, refactor. Write a failing test, make it pass, clean up. I, I get it, but it doesn't really help me. How do I write, how do I write a failing test? Which test should I write? How many? Um, so I, I don't like this summary. I'm going to use, I use a different summary. And because this is how, it, it's the same, same information. It's just presented differently. You are, there's a simple truth. You are way more qualified to solve any coding problem after you've already solved it once. Just like uh, midterm or something, after you take the test, the next day, oh, you'd be way better at that test. Um, software is the same way. So test-driven development is about getting through, coming up with the questions we want to ask about our software, questions about our co code, our design, our API, and then getting through a first draft, getting through that first implementation as fast as possible so that then you can have more time, you've got the rest of, the rest of your time to really make it something you're proud of. Because I, it's way more fun to code when you're proud of what you create. Um, one of the things, before I move on, I want to like, there, there's often this idea of like you're going to spend half of your time, like a third of your time writing tests, a third of your time writing code and the first draft and then a third refactoring. It's never like that. It's always, sometimes there's no refactor. It's, you're like, oh, I think it's good anyway. Let's just move on to the next feature. And sometimes it's like, oh, I need to clean up the variable, na variable names or you go through code review, it's a little, a few changes. And then some, and but that's good because sometimes it's, uh, like a massive, I just need to rechange the system. And then, but the reason why I think is that's great is to iterate, you iterate through this, you build up your knowledge, you build up your understanding of how the code works, you build up your understanding of the, the domain, and uh, you're, you're more qualified to make the changes later, so it's good. And the other thing I want to bring up is um, uh, Ye, the, the traditional diagram of like three bubbles of test code and refactor really aren't single states. In this diagram, I've got a whole bunch of small circles and they indicate the times where I write, I run some tests. I, you run them all the time. And okay, the red ones are failures. And then as soon as it turns green, you're done with your first draft. So you, um, 
you can move on you, uh, and start refactoring. And sometimes your refactorings make your tests fail. So you go back and clean it up and make them green. Um, so if I look at the time spent here, if I reduce the amount of time I spend on writing the tests and I reduce the amount of time that it takes to run the tests, then I have more time left to do the fun stuff, to get through the first implementation first, to do refactorings. I love to redesign systems. It's fun. Let's get all that work that we don't really want to spend too much time out of the way quickly. And that's what, uh, where PyTest and PyCharm help us. Uh, PyTest will help us write the tests faster, and, and PyCharm will help us with there too, but PyCharm also really shines at making sure that we run the tests as fast as possible. And we also, uh, one of the things that uh, I want to highlight is when you're debugging a problem, you often, uh, you don't need to run all the tests. You can run just like some of them. And both PyTest and PyCharm allow you to do that. I want to test something. Right now I have the cards project. I have, um, uh, before I get into it, this is where you can get it. I've got it up on GitHub. I just uploaded the current version 20 minutes ago. Um, and now I'll leave it alone and forever so that people can c go back and look at it later. Um, and I do have it branched because I'm using this cards project uh, in the test and code podcast as just, I want to do this out in the open. I picked a project and I want to like, uh, in, uh, in open source on GitHub um, and on the test and code podcast, talk about all the testing concepts and build up this application. And right now it's a command line app. It's a to-do app. It's pretty simple, um, but it, uh, it's going to grow because I want to explore things like testing, testing with Flask or testing with Pyramid or Django or uh, REST API. So this will grow into other things. But right now it's a command line interface. And uh, I, I don't know, I put this up here. I like looking at the structure um, because tr the tree command is fun. Uh, PyTest. Uh, this if you jump into the cards project and just type PyTest, this is what you get. If ev all, everything's passing, it's really easy just to run everything. And right now, I only got 40 tests and it doesn't do much. Um, and it runs in less than a second. Now, um, if I add the, uh, there's a plugin that I can add, uh, the PyTest.cov. You, you can run coverage on PyTest without this, but it makes it so you just add an extra little flag and run your coverage at the same time. Uh, I do this all the time because it's kind of nice. Once I get to 100%, you kind of it's fun to have it stay there. But even if you're, I'm not a uh, coverage uh, uh, somebody that thinks that you ought to ha always have 100% coverage. But if you're at a certain level, I think it's nice to stay there. Uh, and uh, now I'm chuckling because. Uh, uh, because Paul is totally right that this was going to take me more than 10 minutes to get through this part of this presentation. Um, anyway, uh, so PyTest will allow me, one of the things I talked about running different levels of tests, uh, PyTest allows this through uh, testing directories or single tests easily. And then also there's lots of cool ways to run a subset of your tests. Um, you can use the K express dash K to uh, look for like it's like a string expression, and, and I've been corrected that it's not a regular expression. It's like uh, the, the uh, globbing. Um, it's a glob expressions, I think. But um, the uh, markers are great because then I can say stuff like I can have a smoke test that I, I, I mark uh, tests throughout the system with smoke, um, and then I can run all of those as one suite. Um, and then also, what, what, especially like when you're debugging, you don't need to run all the passing tests. I just want to run the failed tests. That was, that's incredibly powerful because it saves you a lot of time and it focuses your energy on what you're trying to do at the time. And then when I'm developing tests, this is a new feature. The uh, new first is awesome because when I'm developing tests, I don't really want to run all the old tests first. I want to run the new one that I just wrote first and then run the rest of the suite. So that's cool. Um, but, and there's more development, there's more speed ups that PyTest gives you. Uh, fixtures, oh, I love fixtures. Parameterization is great. We'll see um, both of those in the demo. And, um, and plugins like our PyTestCov plugin 
Um, a lot of plugins help you save time. But there's an issue. PyTest is a command line interface. And for me, that's not a problem. I love command line interfaces. Not everybody does. I don't know why some people don't like command line interfaces. This is scary to some people. This is like a dream to me. I'm like, yeah, I'm typing away. This is great. But I, I've got people on my team, even. So um, actually, it's so important that some people are not like this that I have another story about this. But I'm going to hold off on that story for just a second. But wait a second. It doesn't matter that I like command line interfaces. I'm trying to reduce the time that it takes me to run tests. And the simple truth is PyCharm is faster than the command line interface at running my tests. So since I want to get on to doing other things, I don't want to just play with command lines, uh, I choose PyCharm. And let's look at what this looks like. So this is way less intimidating to a lot of people. Let's look at um, some of the pieces that help us save time. So it's got, um, you've got your editor. I've got a, a project tree where I can see all my tests. I can run from different places. One of the things I love is the Git integration. The Git integration is amazing. Um, and the, uh, the ability to check for diffs. Um, I can diff against a different branch and it pops it up side by side. Um, things like that save time. And for people like me that really love the terminal, there's a terminal button at the bottom that pops me right into the directory where I'm at. Um, and I don't have to change windows. Saving context switch time. Uh, save, I just stay in the flow more. And, and actually, um, now I should tell you my story. So uh, the story is I, um, I am a team lead. So there's people that work for me. And they've been using for many years a graphical interface, uh, a GUI test runner that's not PyCharm, that's, that can't run PyTest. So we couldn't use PyTest at work. Um, and I just couldn't get everybody to say, they were, used to, they were used to GUIs, they were used to visual. And I couldn't introduce PyTest into my team until PyCharm came along. Um, when, when I started learning PyCharm, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have a test runner. So I know PyCharm is an IDE, it's an editor, but for me, it's the best test runner that I can find. Um, some setup. So it, in order to run PyCharm, especially with this, um, this demo and also with, uh, uh, I, I, I give these, this list to uh, my team as well to get them started. There's just a few things you gotta do. Um, once you have the code, uh, we're, um, PyCharm Community Edition is sufficient for all of this. Um, I'm going to jump through because I want to get to the demo. Uh, make sure you use file open to open an existing project. Don't use new project. Uh, check your interpreter setting to make sure that um, you look. I'm using a virtual environment, so make sure your interpreter setting is correct. The other thing is the default test runner needs to be PyTest. And soon, sometime in the near future, the long future, Eventually, it won't have a dot because PyTest doesn't have a dot anymore. So, so let's do the demo. Um, I'm going to run through a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's just get started. And I already have it set up. Did it go? It did not go. I don't know what to do. Um, so we will scramble. Oh, my apologies. I need to drag this out of full screen. This is one of those things that people are supposed to do before the presentation. There it is. And full screen. And now I need to be able to see it. Mirror. Ugh, wrong mirror. OK. I will try this the hard way. Anybody know what I'm doing wrong? I want to see the uh, the screen that just went into the other 
Not that one, not that one. Huh. Pie chart. There we go. Yay. Now that I have like hardly any time left. Are we out of time? Um, so what did I, what did I want to do? I want to uh, run at different levels. So let's just really quickly do that. I can uh, run there and somewhere. Why am I not seeing this? There, run. Yay, I just ran all the code. Um, but I can run through the, the project tree. I can click on uh, one of the subtests and run those. Um, running all of these is uh, not as exciting as the rest of the demo. Um, but I wanna, wanted to show you, uh, I wanna, I'll jump to a parameterization because that's one of the fun things. Here we've got uh, test filter. So this is a, a very small test actually. Uh, expected output, uh, real output, and then a whole bunch of stuff on the top. And it looks like a table because it is. It's all of the different parameters that I run through. Um, and I can run, this is incredible. So. I've got, there's a, in the gutter now, there's a run button, and if you click on it, you can run it or debug it, and I'm going to initially just run it, and, uh, and then all of the different, uh, the names that I gave each of the parameterizations shows up, brilliant, love it. Um, what did I want to do next? Uh, the, some of the things that save us, all the diff different times I'm running, uh, there's an auto uh, run here button. If I click that, now anytime um, I make a change, I can just wait a little bit and it reruns my tests for me automatically. Um, this is really great when I'm trying to fix tests or developing new tests. Um, it just runs it in the background all the time. The other, the other thing that I really like, uh, there's a couple more things. You can, you can change the delay for how long it waits. And then I always have this selected, the select first failed test when finished. So it runs all of your tests and then it jumps you right to the test that failed first and you can debug that one first. Um, time, do we have any more time? Five minutes, sweet. See, this is saving us so much time. We have all, all, all the time in the world. Um, I wanted to talk about test driven development a little bit, but one of the things that, another thing that helps you with uh, this is a split mode feature, which um, is kind of fun. If I've got a test that I want to run, let's say, oh, terminal window also. So this is a terminal uh, command line interface. I'm going to jump into the terminal window, and now I can run my cards right there. And no, I can't. Huh. Should have practiced this ahead of time. So let's not do that. Um, the uh, um, what did I want to do? I've got a, a tracer bullet test. Um, that uh, that that I want to take a look at, and also with it within all this this window down here, if you double click on anything, it takes you right to the test you want to run. Um, the uh, API is that it? Hmm. Yeah. Split vertically. That's good. Um, what else should we do with that? Oh, I was going to do a uh, uh, tracer bullet. So let's get rid of some of these windows so I have a little more space. Um, so one of the things I can't do right now is I can't get one item. So I wrote a, I pre-wrote a test because I knew I was going to be slow at this. And uh, if I have this uh, test, did I already and then run it, it should fail because I don't have that feature yet. So this, this test is uh, setting, up, uh, setting up some items in, into the database. And um, right here I've got these fixtures that say empty uh, uh, my empty database and a cards command line interface shim. So I've got a little, I've got a fixture that sets up my database for me. And these are just like set up and tear down, but they're PyTest uses a fixtures 
You can also do setup and teardown, but don't. Learn how to use fixtures, they're great. Um, and then the card CLI is just a function that does a whole bunch of extra gunk that's ugly um, that, uh, yeah, so that's, it's not here, um, that, uh, that I forgot where I was. Um, but it, uh, it, uh, it will, um, I forgot where I was completely. No, nah, new time speaker, great. Um, anyway, uh, the, it, it wraps up some common functions and then it returns a function that I can call for my command line interface. So let's, uh, let's get back to there. Um, and I, one of the things I wanted to show is debugging. So I'll try to rush through that because it's awesome. Um, if I have the tracer bullets here and then I have the command line interface and I want that one over to the right. Um, I, the list feature, I went and uh, just copied the list feature and, and I uh, split out the list. So if I list items, um, getting an item is like listing an item, but just listing one. So I, f I figured, uh, let's try that. Um, and then I'll run the test again. And it should still fail. Um, but why I'm doing this is because I want to debug it. And I can just, um, in the when I'm running the tests, I can run the debugger instead of running. And as soon as I get to this place, uh, it's the debugger instead of the normal runner. And I can step into my code. And, uh, oh, that's the CLI. Don't want that. Let's step out of that. What I want is, uh, did get oh, yeah, I did. Never mind. Um, let's pull up this uh, get function. And that's where I wanted to, uh, oh, I don't have it implemented yet. Let's implement that and then put a breakpoint. Stop it, rerun it. How exciting, watching somebody fumble up on stage. Um, all right, let's keep running. And then it jumps me right into the get card function. OK, so that's the magic. I can, I can debug a test and the code at the same time. Yay. Um, <laughs> I was going to try to solve that problem up on stage, too, and, and uh, fix the bug and talk about refactoring because um, uh, this implementation of just copying another function is pretty bad. But clearly, we're kind of running out of time. So I'm going to switch to not switch this. I do ha the last slide has uh, like uh, more information. And I, I'm afraid I will break something if I try to switch to that. <gasps> yeah, more information, but you know, that's, it's, it's gone. Um, uh, but th there's, there, I do have more information about more, uh, where to find information about PyTest, about PyCharm, and, uh, and yeah, special thank you to, now, Paul is probably now very glad that he didn't come up on stage with me, uh, but, um, we are doing all the things that, like, we, I rushed through and didn't have near enough time to cover, or just fumbled because I was telling stories, um, we're going to have an open session tomorrow at 2, and, uh, and I would love to have anybody come by and ask questions. And then also, I wasn't around a lot today because I was, uh, oddly enough, I believe it, I was getting ready for this talk. Um, uh, but, um, but I'm going to be around that we have a stage. Uh, Michael and I and some of the other podcasters and community people have a, have a booth over in the 300 area. Uh, look for the rocket, and you should be able to find me tomorrow. And, uh, and then, like I said, we have a 2 o'clock uh, open session. So thanks a lot.